Welcome to our lecture online. Now for something a little bit more challenging. Here we have y equals e to the ax times the sine of bx and we need to find the first derivative and the second derivative. And notice in the first derivative we already have a product so we're going to need to use the product rule so we'll end up with something that's kind of messy and then we need to take the derivative again. So here it is. Strictly following the rules is the key to getting it correct. So here we write y prime is equal to, we have a product, so we take the first, which is e to the ax, times the derivative of the second, the derivative of the sine is the cosine, so times the cosine of bx, times the derivative of bx, which would be b, because it's with respect to x. And then we go plus the second, which is the sine of bx, times the derivative of the first, which is e to the ax, times the derivative of the exponent with respect to x, so that times a. Simplifying that, we get y prime is equal to b times e to the ax times the cosine of bx plus a times e to the ax times the sine of bx. So now here we have the first derivative. I'll circle it so we can see it. So now we take the second derivative. Notice again that we have a product here and a product there, so we'll have to apply the product rule twice in this case. So we have y double prime. And that is equal to, we have b times. We take the first, e to the ax, times the derivative of the second. Now the derivative of the cosine is a negative sign, so negative sine of bx times the derivative of bx, which is b, plus the second, which is the cosine of bx, times the derivative of the first, which is e to the ax, times the derivative of the exponent, which is a, like that. Now we do the same for the second term right here, so we have plus a, the first, e to the ax, times the derivative of the second, the derivative of the sine is the cosine, so we have the cosine of bx plus the second, which is, oh, we're not done yet, because we take the, the derivative of cosine of bx times the derivative of bx, which is b, plus the second, which is the sine of bx, times the derivative of the first, which is e to the ax, times the derivative of the exponent a like that. Now we just need to clean that up algebraically. So let's see what we have here. We have b times b and a negative sign. So we have minus b squared e to the ax times the sine of bx. And then here we have b times a. So we have plus ab times e to the ax times the cosine of bx. And then over here we have uh, b times a, so we have plus ab e to the ax times the cosine of bx. And let's see here, wow, I think we can combine these two, right, because they're exactly the same, all right? And finally we have a times a, so we have plus a squared times the sine. Oh, I like to write the exponential first, so let's do that. So we have a squared times e to the ax times the sine of bx, like that. I don't think I need closing brackets because I didn't put brackets in, so we get rid of that. Okay, but we definitely can combine these two. And then we have, uh, let's see here, e to the ax sine of bx, e to the ax sine of bx, so we can combine those two as well. So we end up with a squared, so this is equal to so we have y double prime, y double prime. So we have a squared minus b squared times e to the ax sine of bx. And then we can combine these two. So we have plus 2ab e to the ax times the cosine of bx. Okay, I put some parentheses around that sometimes. That makes it a little bit more clear. I guess we could potentially factor out an e to the ax, but we'll leave it at that. That's good enough. So there it is. 
there's our second derivative. What's nice about this is that we we're able to show that in each case we use, carefully use the um, product rule here and then we have to use a product rule again on both terms the second time around when we take the second derivative. And that is how it's done.